What's up guys, a pretty common retrofit for the E93 series is to upgrade the mirror from the standard one as you see right here. You nothing out really on it, nothing cool at all. Just got this little adjuster at the bottom, um, manual adjustment, and uh, that's about it. You can't really do much with this one. Or you can get one with a compass, um, like this one over here has a compass and it also has Homelink on it, which will make it easier to open my garage door without having to use that guy over there. So pretty small thing, but one of my friends just gave it to me. It's a pretty expensive thing, hundred bucks. Um, it's actually not that expensive for a BMW part, but uh, on eBay you can probably find them cheaper. It's got the clown nose. Um, I believe it's part of the alarm system, but my car doesn't have that, so kind of irrelevant for me. Um, it's got the home link buttons and has the compass um, and auto dimming as well. Actually, I believe this is a newer variation of that mare on the U90s. Maybe the LCI models had it, as the clown nose, as they call it, is a bit smaller and lower profile. And um, the compass is kind of behind the mirror, it's less obvious, and the auto dimming sensor is slightly different. So, from going from nothing to this should be a pretty decent upgrade, however it does require some wiring. So, you need to go to ECS Tuning or whatever, I think they're the primary seller of this kit. Probably going to be newly as well, but it's going to be way more costly. Um, but here's the kit, here's the part number, just a few wires, some clips. Um, you actually will not need to use all of it, um, but it is available. Now, this mirror was free to me, so I'm really not going to complain about it. Um, it's going to be a pretty cool thing for me to have. Just a really small upgrade with the home link and all that. Um, however, if I were to do this again, I would get the mirror with the FLA option, which means a little camera in the back, which basically gives you adaptive high beams. So my C63 actually has that option, but essentially, if you pull the high beam switch once, um, the car will be basically automatically detecting other cars on the other side of the road, so it can automatically turn the high beams off. Um, I think it's a really great option. I wish the ML had that, but um, unfortunately, retrofits are not that easy in that car. Um, but they're very easy on this car. So maybe in the future, someday, if I come across one, I'll, I'll pick it up and install it. Um, and at least the wiring for this will make it a lot easier. But for now, we'll just be doing the home link, uh, compass, and such. So that does involve taking off the mirror, um, which can be very dangerous because you can crack your windshield pretty easily. Um, my windshield is actually already cracked right behind there, actually. So I might want to be a little bit more careful than usual um, just because I don't want to make it worse but I will be replacing this windshield soon anyway so you know not too big of a deal I suppose that's why I'm doing it now um, and uh, so we had to take off this this little shroud around the mirror first you can kind of see that there it's pretty easy to take apart you may need some clips um, or some uh, rather um, what's it called trim removal tools to do that it's fairly easy though um, I can probably spray with part of my hands real quick I'll be right back when I get that done so this shroud kind of comes apart like so, pretty easily. I'm going to put that to the side for now. Um, and here we can see the mirror itself on that stock. And for some reason this sensor, I'm not quite sure what it is, is hanging. Just should be attached there, but I'm not going to reattach it for now as I'm getting a new windshield. Um, but now we have to rotate the mirror clockwise. It's basically on a hexagonal nut. And if we rotate the entire arm very gently um, clockwise, it'll just kind of pop off. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. That was not as gentle as I planned. Um, and you can kind of see the crack right behind there. Um, but not a big deal if you're going to get this replaced. But uh, yeah, it's off now, as you can see. And now we can start removing the uh, this module right here. I believe it's called the FZD module. Um, there are some computers back here. Um, that's where our new harness will kind of plug into. And we can run the wire down through that grommet right there. So. Let's get some trim removal tools and we'll put them in between the headliner and the dome lights right here, right around there. So once it's the FZD or whatever it's called is removed properly, I can't remember the name, but it's F something D or whatever. Um, but once it's removed properly, it looks kind of like this, just kind of hanging down by the wires, not a huge deal. Um, it does kind of make a mess just to all the debris from the kind of edge of the headliner. It's kind of annoying to pull out, um, but nothing we can't fix later on. Um, not a huge deal either way. Um, also, this light cover just kind of snapped off, but it'll snap right back on, so not a huge deal if that happens to you. Um, so now we can see that grommet that goes to the windshield right there. So we need to wiggle that free eventually somehow, and um, in fact, it just kind of pulls out. And there we go, it's already kind of over here, which is kind of what we want. So uh, now we're going to move on and get the wiring kind of started, uh, wiring through that grommet at least. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. 
as you can see the new wiring harness for the new mirror um, has its own little grommet and its own um, kind of rubber piece around it which uh, we were not going to be using because our car already has this rubber grommet over here obviously older and that same plastic clip at the top so and it's already wires running through it so what we're going to do is we're going to take the wires out of this little situation over here just involves a little cutting of the grommet and just pull the wire straight out we're going to leave uh, probably this covering on maybe a little bit I think we have to take it off actually because we need to feed these wires through this grommet now trick us on the forum seems pretty cool actually probably it'll work pretty well is obviously feed the wire to the top hole right there in the headliner and then as they come down one by one feed them through the straw that you can kind of put in this grommet now getting the straw alone in the grommet was not very easy um, but I used some pliers and just kind of get it got it through um, it takes a little bit of a uh, kind of working around but eventually you can kind of get it done um, so I think you'll have to put one wire through from this side to this side and just kind of feed them out and um, eventually we'll have all five I want to say wires um, at this side to which we can put um, a 10 pin connector um, which we can hook up I have a little wiring diagram I'll be using I'll just show you guys which pin they go in also the link the forum post below it was really helpful I think and um, the rest of the wires will be plugged into existing connectors up here. Um, they all primarily go into, I believe it's uh, this one right here. It's a black connector um, just next to the really small connector. So it's, it's also black, um, but I guess it basically goes as a white big connector, there's a really small black connector, and another black connector, and another one after that. So the black connector next to the small black connector is what we'll be using. And then the last wire is a ground wire. That's going to tap into the ground wire in the small connector which you can kind of, you can't really see from this angle but if I go over here kind of see a brown wire right there and that's the one we'll be connecting the ground to so um, first of all I'm going to put the wires through there like I was saying earlier and look at the wires fed through the straw and then uh, we'll hook them up at the pin at the end alright so as painful as that was I got all the wires um, through as you can see I got the rear end of the harness over here and I got the main side over there all the way through the, the um, little hole in the headliner and through the straw and now I have to do is just pull the straw out and uh, just like that and I can actually cut it off if I want to or I can just kind of pull it out slowly um, but um, now we can get our connector over here which is a little 10 pin guy and uh, we can start wiring it up this is what it looks like um, it actually, if you look closely, it's kind of not hard to focus on here, but it actually has a 1, a 6, and a, uh, a 5, and a 10, just kind of let you know what's what in terms of pins. I'm just going to tell you verbally what, what uh, each one goes into, and then I'll show you the end result. So I've got this plug all wired up, wired up now, as you can see. So here's the forum post I was looking at before. It's essentially, it's, it says uh, the gray and violet wire goes to pin 1, green white pin 3, black brown pin 4, brown white pin 5 and brown wires in pin 10. For uh, this connector up here which are disconnected you actually need to take this gray part out of the black sleeve um, to kind of unlock it so this little tab I'm kind of not sure if you guys can see that but this little tab uh, basically right there at the top of the connector and uh, you do have to press down on it somehow and kind of spread the black part apart and the gray part will just slide out like so. And we can see it all out, and we can properly pin the connector in the same way we did with the other black small connector over there. So, um, also a diagram over here. So, the um, brown with the white stripe wire goes into pin 16. Um, the brown, and I didn't know what SW meant, but I'm, I assume it's black. The brown and black wire will go into pin 15. The green and violet goes into pin 14. And the green with the white stripe um, will go into pin 20. And then that remaining brown wire, which actually has no pin at the end of it, as you can see over here, will just be going to the ground at the small connector. Now I have a little wire tap you can use. Um, however, it may just be easier just to kind of re uh, reveal some of the, the actual copper wire beneath the uh, rubber skin and just kind of twist around and just do a job like that. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's just a ground as long as it's kind of there. In this case, it's not a huge deal if it's not properly on there. I mean, it is just a compass and a little garage opener, so... Not a huge deal, but you definitely want to do it properly, uh, pretty, pretty well, you know, just for the sake of having it, I mean, sake of peace of mind and all that. Um, so I'll probably be using a tap because it's a little bit cleaner to do. I, li I like having connections like that over just kind of twisting wires around. So I'll be doing that. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this connector up and then uh, add the ground. And we're gonna plug that in to the actual mirror, make sure it's all working. 
and we should be all set. All right, so so far I put that one main connector back together. It's back plugged into the unit over here. And then we got this one small connector over here. We need to get the ground. As you can see, that brown wire, I'm gonna tap into that. Um, I gotta say the most annoying part about this entire process so far has been taking out um, this guy over here in addition to dealing with this really annoying like fabric tape um, that's been kind of encapsulating all the wires. Now, the stuff on the fresh harness was not awful. It was still pretty bad. But this stuff is like 10 years old, 11 years old. It's full of like just gooey and just, oh, it's terrible. Um, so that is one thing to know. You may want to use some gloves for this. Um, it does get pretty annoying. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to peel this back a little bit and then kind of tap into that brown wire for the ground. As you can see, there's my splice right there. Sorry for the shaky camera right there. But um, I've got the small ground wire and the big ground wire. Pretty easy with the splice connector. Um, I do recommend one of these instead of just using some electrical tape and you know whatever you get around. This was pretty easy. And then one thing I forgot to mention is that once you have the connectors or rather the wires in this connector, the 10 pin down here, that goes in the mirror itself, you have to kind of pinch on it. You'll see what I mean when you do it yourself. But um, you got to pinch together to kind of lock the wires in place. Um, otherwise, it will not go into the connector in the mirror. So you can make sure that works, and then we should be good to go. Um, ground's connected, all the wires are good. I'm going to test it out, plug the mirror in real quick, just make sure it's actually working before we continue in reassembly. And there we have it. i got the compass showing up right now, and I can't really do this with two hands. Um, my both hands are full right now, but if I press the uh, home link buttons, it will, you know, it'll just, uh, it, the light will flash right there in the, in the left side. So it's all working. I'm pretty happy about this. Pretty cool little retrofit. I'll make a separate video on how to connect your uh, MyQ uh, or whatever home link you have to your uh, garage door opener right here. It's kind of cumbersome to do, but overall not too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I'm going to put it back together and just give you a final clip at the end. And there it is, guys. We got the fully installed um, home link mirror with the compass over there and the clown nose. Um, now, like I said in my car, I don't think the clown nose does anything as I don't have an alarm. Uh, I'm really not sure, honestly. I'm going to have to look into it. Um, but either way, the main thing for me is the garage door opener, so that'll be the next video on how to program it. Um, but that's it for this video, and uh, let me know if you have any questions regarding the install. It is a little bit annoying to do, only because you do have to do some wiring work, which for me is always a pain. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Peace out.